G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for part 2 of the Path of Exile Survival Guide series, the full walkthrough for Path of Exile. So in the last episode we cleared right from the start all the way to the ledge waypoint. The only thing we skipped was one side quest that gives a passive respec point. These are the sorts of quests that you can come back and do at a later date if you actually need the passive respec point. So let's jump straight into it and go back to the ledge waypoint to continue on. So we'll go through from the waypoint here in town to the ledge waypoint. Now the first little pro tip I want to give you guys to find out which way you need to go in the ledge simply look at the waypoint. It actually points in the direction you want to go. So the pointy end of the waypoint here leads towards the uh, zone boss and the exit we want to head towards. Now I just want to say the uh, ledge is a fantastic zone to farm if you're feeling a bit not quite confident about uh, in your either in your abilities or in your character. If you're feeling a little bit squishy then this is a great spot to farm. In here you pretty much only have uh, skeletons that deal normal physical damage and you have some slow shuffling zombies and uh, some sort of cliff, cliff scra uh, scrabbler sort of uh, guys here like these cannibals here which um they don't deal too much damage either they're all pretty easy to deal with just with your normal aoe skills and there is pretty nice clusters as well and because it's just a straight line sort of zone just one point to one point end point to end point straight line uh it's it's pretty easy to run as well pretty easy and fast so you can easily do a few runs of this to uh level yourself up now the way you do that i'll actually show you when we get into the next zone but you can refresh zones in path of exile to uh, essentially reset them so that all of the mobs will appear in there again. And you can just run that same zone over and over uh, until you have the desired amount of experience that you want. So, we're just clearing through normally, same, same sort of deal, using our AoE skills to uh, slowly pick off these guys. Now, Poison Arrow doesn't stack, so the Poison Cloud here will only deal a set amount of damage. If I shoot down two Poison Arrows, it won't do any extra damage, but I just like to keep refreshing that, spreading out that Poison Arrow as much as possible, and we'll go in here and grab this Portal Scroll. Now, that Ice Ground effect there looks like we have another Domination League Shrine up ahead. So we'll slowly, and that explains why there's so many Skeletons here as well. Fantastic for leveling up these Shrines, actually, because they really increase the number of enemies that you're encountering. So, as usual, we're going to be keeping an eye on our gear, whether we need any sorts of slots. Looking at this sort of gear on the ground here, nothing we really, really we need, so we can just continue onwards. So, before we actually take on this shrine, I'm actually going to zoom back a little bit, and we'll spend our level. Now, we're still heading up through Heart of the Oaks, so I'll go ahead and grab that point there. Alright, and then we'll head down to the south a bit, and in investigate what this particular shrine is. So, it looks like it's a freezing shrine, which will do some damage and slow us down. But grabbing it for ourselves, we now do the same thing to our enemies, which is going to make... Progressing through here, pretty interesting and fun. Now, we've actually encountered the zone boss, the uh, the slayer of new players, Kuduku. And uh, also the most embarrassing boss to die to in the game, because it actually can't move. That's right, it's a giant totem. So Kuduku here uses lightning attacks. He uses uh, what's known as spark, these little tiny spark things here that kind of fly around. They buzz around pretty quickly. And he also uses Shock Nova if you get close to him. So as you can see, we move in here. He uses a pretty powerful Shock Nova. Now the thing about Shock Nova is it actually can't hit you if you're right up next to Kuduku. So you have a few options. As a melee character, you can stand in there fine. You're just going to eat damage from the sparks. And you can tank that okay. And uh, Or if you're a ranged character, you can simply stay out of range of the shock. So if I move in a little bit more, you'll notice you start using it there. And you can see we can take quite a bit of damage from that. So our best option is actually to stand somewhere in the open, just out of range of that, and just, just simply shoot Kuduku. Now as a melee character we can simply move up into range here and you'll notice we're taking a lot less damage since he's not able to shock us as quite as effectively as he was before. But we'll move back out since we're a range character, take advantage of our range and finish him off there. So pretty nice stuff. We'll go grab any, anything useful here. There's a small life loss, we don't need any of that sort of thing. We'll go ahead and grab just any currency items that it happened to drop. So after Kuduku you pretty much have the end of the zone. So we'll go ahead and uh, go into the climb. But first I just want to show you guys how to refresh the zones. If you hold down control and then left click the zone exit, it'll open up this instant manager. Now, if you've already been in the zone, there'll be one here that'll have a timer and say 15 minutes remaining on that instance. You can go back into one you've already been in, or you can simply select a new instance and create a new one. So currently, since we haven't been in the climb, there's no other instances to enter except for a new one. So we can go ahead and do that. Now, this actually works on the waypoint menu as well. If you're using a waypoint, you can simply control click the waypoint to open up the instance manager as well. It doesn't work, obviously, because we're not at a waypoint. So we'll go ahead and use that to create a new instance in the climb, even though it would have done that by default anyway. But that's a good way to go about refreshing zones and to continue farming. Now we do indeed want to level up Poison Arrow because that will increase the damage that Poison Arrow does by quite a bit. 
Now this zone here is fairly dangerous. Uh, if you're moving into it under leveled, it is it can be a real risk. You have a real risk of dying in this particular zone. So, but we're doing pretty well. We you know, we. We are level 8, and we're in a level 8 zone, so we're doing okay, and should be fine. Now, the two types of enemies you're going to mostly deal with in here are Skeletons and these Leap Slamming uh, slash Fireball Shooting Goatmen. The Leap Slam does a fair bit of damage, so you want to try and avoid that if you can, and uh, the, the Skeleton Archers aren't a big deal. And then we have the third type of enemy, we have the Flame Hellions. Now, these guys, when they die, you'll notice that they explode in fire. This is kind of like the Fire Trap skill. And it does damage to you if you stand in that fire, so you kind of want to kill those guys and keep moving. If you stand in the fire, you know, you'll take quite a bit of damage, so you don't want to stick around in that for too long. So the best way to actually move through this zone, if you're feeling reasonably confident, is to simply keep moving forwards and shooting behind you. However, since there's a Domination Shrine here, we're actually going to be a little bit more cautious and just pick off these guys like this. Now, since these are all just normal white mobs, we'll just keep moving backwards, staying out of that flame effect, and uh, using Poison Arrow to pick these guys off. Okay, so we have... Another shrine here. It's another shock shrine. I'm actually going to use my Quicksilver Flask to run in and grab that for myself. Now, as you can see, I've actually been put on fire there by one of the uh, fire arrows, or possibly a fireball from a goatman or something like that. But we're dealing shock novas now, killing everything near us. Pretty fun stuff. I'm enjoying this new Domination League. I'm going to have a lot of fun doing this series. So I'm glad I started it up in this new four-month league. And we've got another level there. Just keeping an eye on this, any of this, these items here, but none of this sort of stuff is an upgrade for us yet. We especially want to keep an eye out for any any magical items, because they they might be a good upgrade for us. So I'm going to continue up towards Ballistic Mastery then, then we'll probably head south from that point. So I'm going to grab some shrines here. We've actually got another Shock Nova Shrine. So I'm going to uh, scoot my way around and see if I can work my way in and grab that. Too many, too many mobs in here, especially because this is a pretty dangerous zone. We're going to uh, just be a little bit more cautious. Now that item that I dropped over there is an armorous scrap which can be used to improve the quality of gear. Quality gives bonuses simply to armor, energy shield, or evasion. But we don't want to use too many of those in the beginning, but they're pretty handy for either trading for wisdom scrolls or for uh, upgrading gear a little bit later when we start crafting. Now how are our boots doing? We actually have life on our boots, so we, I'm not going to bother picking up any other ones at the moment. We do have a transmute uh, currency item, so we can use that to craft ourselves a piece of gear if we need something soon. Now I'll just continue farming through here, just progressing the same way, and heading up through each of these ramps. There'll be quite a few of these little ramps, and you'll eventually come to an area where there's going to be a, a kind of a narrow co corridor through the mountains. So we're going to continue on that way. Now there is actually a waypoint in this zone, so you can search around for that. It's in the early section of the zone, and uh, activating that waypoint will obviously save your progress, and uh, you can pop straight back to here instead of going through the ledge. But you kind of just go straight through this zone, so it's not, not really mandatory for you to seek out that waypoint. Now I'm just going to kill off these guys because we're actually about to encounter the zone boss for this particular zone. Now the best way to manage your flasks is actually to alternate between them. See, I've used all of my, my flasks here, my uh, medium flask. It's actually better for me to use you know, one charge from it than one charge from space from the uh, other mana flask. <laughs> I keep forgetting the hotkeys will be different for you guys. But um, the reason for that is all of your mana flasks fill up as you kill things. All of your flasks indeed kill up as fill up as you kill things. But we have Iron Point, the Forsaken here, which is the zone boss here. He uses Rain of Arrows, basically, to uh, do, do quite a bit of damage and Split Arrows as well. Split Arrows isn't too much of a concern, but if you stand still for too, too long, he'll start using Rain of Arrows on you. Let's see if I can get, get him to show that off. And there's Rain of Arrows. That does quite a bit, bit of damage as well. It's pretty easy to avoid him, though, to take him out. You just want to keep moving. Even if you're a melee character, you can simply keep him close, but just keep attacking him and keep moving. He'll move around a bit as well, since he is a ranged attacker. So by himself, he's not too hard to deal with. But if you do happen to engage him while there are a lot of other enemies around, he could be a little bit dangerous. But as you saw, we didn't have too much trouble with him there, just by himself. There's a rare item there. We'll just pick that up to, just to sell. We won't need that since it's a melee weapon. And as you can see, we've now reached the uh, narrow corridor through the cliffs, and this signifies that you're reaching the end of the zone, and we get to head into the jails. Or the prison. Yeah, the lower prison, <laughs> not jails. <laughs> so entering the lower prison, we're actually going to be looking for a waypoint in the prison somewhere, so let's progress through. And there are a few bosses to deal with in here as well. Now, the first time you play through here, you'll notice something very cool. The music in this place is very, very awesome. 
So I currently have the music turned down for this particular video, but you guys can enjoy that just for yourselves when you play. Now I've actually ran straight into the boss for this particular zone, Chatters. Chatters is extremely dang dangerous in melee. I even recommend skipping him if you are a melee character because he uses uh, basically uh, glacial, glacial Hammer, the Glacial Hammer skill, which has a chance to freeze you on hit. Now I will try and d show this off for you guys, just so you guys learn. Now as you can see, when it hits you normally, it just chills you, but as you saw there, it also freezes you. In addition to dealing a ton of damage, so getting frozen not being able to run away and having a ton of damage dealt to you is pretty dangerous. Main ranged characters though can simply kite him around pretty easily. If you get too close though, he will, he will tend to hit you. So you can use a Quicksilver Flask to keep your distance. So we'll just work him down, hopefully get some good loot. We've got a few magical pieces. we got uh, some gauntlets and a chest piece that could be good. So we'll go ahead and identify both of those. And uh, yep, the chest piece isn't very good. But we'll switch that out for ours because it's it has a bit of energy shield which is going to help us a bit more and some gloves magical just rarity nothing big we can go ahead and drop the white item so now we'll just work out work our way up through the zone and we're going to be looking for a waypoint okay so in here you'll notice that i've encountered uh, a necromancer up here now necromancers uh they, they, that can be tough to deal with when there's quite a few skeletons around because they'll actually resurrect any skeletons you kill off so you want to prioritize killing these guys as soon as possible you'll notice they also have some energy shields so poison arrow is very effective at dealing with them because poison arrow uh, skips it bypasses the energy shield but otherwise you need to keep attacking them because if you if you leave them alone for too long their energy shield re will regenerate and it becomes quite hard to uh down them so we have another shrine up here so i'm gonna Top up my mana and just uh, slowly work these guys down as well. Just being cautious, getting into the habit of uh, not running in and getting ourselves killed. Although in normal on uh, soft core leagues, so non-hardcore leagues, uh, you it does there's no penalties for death in normal basically. However, as you reach the higher difficulties, there's actually XP penalties for death. So you want to get in the habit of not dying too much, and uh, it's, it's good to practice this for the later leagues, the later difficulties. And of course, if you are playing on hardcore, you want to uh, never ever die. So <laughs> it's, it's very good to be cautious then. Now, we'll, I'll kill off most of these guys, and I'll go in and grab this for myself. Now we can use that to kill off the guys. It's pretty fun. I'm enjoy really enjoying this league. And we've got a chain belt. It's slightly better than our chain belt, so we'll go ahead and switch it out. Now, about jewelry, things like belts, rings, and amulets. If you, Even if it was the same, it would still be worthwhile me switching that over, because... Jewelry scales based on the level at which it drops. So here we're dropping level 9, basically, around level 9. Level 9 to 11 uh, chain belts, essentially. Uh, the one we had before was from a much lower level, and the magical mods that you could roll on it, that you could craft with it, uh, would be much poorer, basically. So what, what I'm actually going to do, since we just got this, uh, and I kind of want to give us a little bit more power. I'm going to use this transmute on this chain belt. We ended up getting getting 10 strength, which is not very helpful for us. It gives us a tiny bit more life. You'll notice our life goes up from 208 to 214. So that's because strength ends up giving you a little bit of life. Now we've got another passive point, so I'm going to grab this. Now, as you can see, we've now reached the waypoint for this zone. Now, you always want to make sure to touch these waypoints to activate them. As you can see, we didn't touch the waypoint in the climb. As I said, not really mandatory to do so. But you definitely want to touch the one here in the prison. And touching it activates it. If you just happen to run past it, you actually won't get that waypoint. And uh, we want to make sure we do that. It's pretty heartbreaking when you uh, make, your, make it very far, end up dying, and uh, realize that you didn't actually touch the waypoint. So we're going to continue through here. And uh, we're closing in on the uh, first major boss of this zone. So we've encountered a bunch of unique mobs. They're kind of called zone bosses. These are just like uh, like mini bosses. Some of them represent uh, sort of unique challenges. They have different skills and things like that to challenge you. And some of them can be very dangerous. But uh, in general, they're not quite as hard as the uh, major bosses of each act. There's usually two boss major bosses in each act, but uh, Act 3 actually has uh, three of them, I believe. No, maybe two. Still maybe two. But uh, as you can see, we've now reached the uh, waypoint, the uh, upper prison zone, and we kind of just took an outside route. Now, generally, in navigating these zones, it's a good idea to stick to the outside wall as well, and you'll eventually find your way to most areas. That's the easiest way to make it through any sort of maze-like zone. So we'll go now into the upper prison, where things get a, a little bit more dangerous in the upper prison, but it's still not too bad. Now, this is also, uh, these are also great places to pick up a few extra levels as well if you want to spend a bit more time in here and just clear them out a bit more thoroughly. As you can see, all of these in here are spellcasters. Uh, they use uh, different types of damage, but uh, in general, each of them 
uh, is pretty dangerous if you walk into a room and take a bunch of shots for them. So if you run into a, a room like that, like we just did then, and notice there's a bunch of spellcasters, you kind of want to back out and draw them through. Because uh, if you run into a room full of those guys, and they all hit you at once, it can kill you very, very quickly. So we're going to run into here now. However, they do, their projectiles do travel pretty slowly, so it's not too hard to kind of uh, just dodge these guys, as long as you kind of keep cir circle strafing around them like we are now. So we'll kill off those guys, and we'll progress along. And we'll see if we've actually picked the right direction, because you can kind of either go left or right from the doorway when you first enter this zone, and uh, <laughs> it's kind of a, you know, it's a rough 50-50 chance of whether you're going to get the correct directions. But it looks like, based on the map, there's actually another shrine down here, so... We'll kill off these ones behind us so we have a bit of clear space behind us. Oh, we found another coral ring. Let's see if that's an upgrade. It, what, actually, we we didn't have any coral rings yet, so that's actually pretty bad. <laughs> so I'm glad we found one, but what we will do is we'll make an effort to go back to town uh, pretty soon. Now, we do have a, a few portal scrolls. If you don't have any portal scrolls at this point, you want to use that waypoint we just found to actually go back to town and either purchase some portal scrolls from Nessa uh, or gear yourself up by getting... Uh, some better flasks and getting some better coral rings if you don't have any. But we need to really need to take down this necromancer. As you can see, the fact that he's resurrecting all of these skeletons is making life very difficult for us. And oh, we've encountered I think our first rare mob as well. So you'll notice these kind of golden glowing ones. We've encountered plenty of blue glowing ones. This is a, a golden, a yellow glowing uh, mob here. These these are called rare mobs, and they have a number of different magical affixes that make them quite difficult. That one's actually shooting out three projectiles from his spell. So, uh, pretty dangerous. If you're very close to him, he can actually shotgun you with that spell as well. So, we want to keep our distance and just work him down. Now, he has a, f a number of different things, and some of them was for, like, increased energy shield and stuff like that. Now, we've got some gloves. We'll go ahead and identify that. We've got uh, some extra evasion. Eh, not very good. Now, there was actually a total of three necromancers in this room. There might even be more, so this room has been very difficult to clear out. So, just kind of slowly doing that, but trying to prioritize taking down those necromancers. Now, I've actually had a pair of rare chain gloves drop and a medium life flask. You really want to make sure as you move into the jail section that you're starting to get medium life flask and upgrading those, because it's going to heal you for more, and they're going to heal you faster as well. So, very important to upgrade. Flasks are super important in Path of Exile, and you'll have a lot of deaths if you're not paying attention to them. We'll also go ahead and update those... The, uh, identified those new gloves, which rolled uh, some extra mana, accuracy, and a few other minor mobs. Nothing major, but it is better than our current pair of gloves, so we'll go ahead and switch that out. Now, I'll continue clearing through this area here, and uh, we'll try and grab this shrine if we can. A little bit dangerous to run into there this time. Quite a few skeletons and things like that in there. So we'll just, uh, we'll just clear out these guys, and then we'll run in once it's a bit clearer. Okay, we'll use our Quicksilver Flask to get in as quick as possible, and then grab this for ourselves. Now I'm going to clear through the rest of this zone pretty quickly, so we can make it to the boss in time for the rest of this episode. But you guys can take your time through here. It's fairly dangerous with all these spellcasters, so uh, feel free to, you know, sort of take your time. Now we actually happen to get another level, so I'm going to start heading downwards now. We're actually going to start heading over towards this life here, so we're going to go up through there. Now, there's something else I wanted to mention in this zone, is some of these skeletal archers will actually do what's uh, called puncturing you. They'll puncture you. Now, if you notice your character is spewing out blood at a rapid rate, and, uh, you know, uh, your life is going down, and you can't quite figure out why, you're probably actually bleeding. Now, the bleed mechanic, I'll show it to you guys if I can, but uh, the bleed mechanic is pretty interesting. Uh, the best way to deal with it is actually to stop running, which is against your normal impulse. When you're taking a lot of damage, your first impulse is usually to run away, get out, get away from the damage. This is actually the worst thing you can do against bleed. The best thing you can do is simply stand still, if you're not in immediate danger from a bunch of enemies, and to uh, use a health flask and kind of wait for the bleed effect to wear off. So I will show this if I can, but it basically just looks like a lot of blood continuously pouring out of your uh, body, and there'll be a little icon up in the top left here that'll show that you are bleeding. So, very dangerous. If you keep running, you'll take a lot of extra damage from that puncture. Now, we've got another rare mob in here. And uh, he has, like, bonus energy shield, gains power charges. Uh, allies resist elemental damage. But, uh, you know, it's not too big a deal to deal with in normal like this. So, we'll just go ahead and kill him as per normal. Looks like another shrine over here. And this glow golden glowing one, as we learned in the last episode, is actually a uh, diamond shrine, which gives the uh, the mobs a 100% chance to critically strike, which is very dangerous, so we want to pull these mobs away from that shrine. Because uh, especially with spellcasters doing things like ice damage, uh, if, they, if they happen to critical us, we'll get frozen, and that will be very, very nasty. 
So we want to kind of want to just pull these guys away as best we can. There's actually a leather belt there that which will probably be very nice. So we'll go ahead and grab that. Uh, and I am keeping an eye on this other gear, nothing too special. Now even though we rolled uh, some strength on this, this 34 to extra life is going to help us quite a lot and uh, brings our life pull up to 288, which is much nicer. I'm very happy with that. So again, we're just going to carefully pull these way guys away, make sure they're not attacking us. These are all mostly melee attackers. So we want to make sure that we definitely pull the ranged attackers out of that aura effect. They seem to be a lot bigger when they're standing in the shrine, that's interesting. I'm pretty sure this is a diamond shrine, but we'll have to double check. Ah, oh, it's a massive shrine. This one's actually different. Okay, so we can't quite tell off the, the uh, aura around their feet. Massive shrine, I'm guessing, probably gives them more life or possibly more damage as well. But uh, that's not too dangerous. We'll go ahead and grab that for ourselves. Oh, we're now massive! <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Super entertaining. Courage stands tall. You have increased life, area of effect, and size. Fantastic. This is actually really nice for our poison arrow. But it also looks hilarious. <laughs> So we use our increased area of effect from our poison arrow to clear out the rest of these guys. We'll check this leather belt because it actually might be better than our currently equipped one. 34, 30, it's worse. Well, looks like we have another massive shrine in there. This is a juicy bunch of experience, so I'm going to go ahead and clear this out as well. We'll just, stand, we'll just stand in the doorway and kill these guys as they come through the door. Pretty nice and easy for us to do this particular one. Now the massive one, the uh, massive mobs aren't, a, aren't a, a huge danger to us, but we certainly don't want to run in there. Oh, you actually probably saw the bleed effect on our character there. I was standing still, so I wasn't taking much damage at all, but very dangerous. If I had been running, I would have been taking a lot more damage from that. Even with a very large life pool that I have from being massive from the shrine, <laughs> still uh, still pretty dangerous. Again, another necromancer. So we just want to prioritize taking this guy out. Oh, this is actually Sawbone, so this is the unique mob. I'm glad we ran into him then. This is the unique mob for this, bone, uh, for this zone here, Sawbones. He's, uh, he's a bit tougher to kill than normal... Uh, normal necromancers, and uh, yeah, other than that, he's uh, just a, just a little bit stronger in general. There's not too much to say about him as a unique mob. I think he also might summon skeletons. Yeah, he does summon skeletons. Like additional sort of skeletons, but I haven't seen any yet, yet because he's still got plenty of these guys to resurrect. But again, we just want to prioritize taking him down. Since he has a lot of life, it takes a little while. And we'll go ahead and pick up these rare boots. We could have something good here. See if we get some move speed. You really want to try and get move speed on your boots as soon as possible. And we got, ooh, very nice boots. They have move speed. They have cold resist, fire resist, and just a few other mobs that aren't, the mods that aren't too exciting. But uh, that move speed is very good. So worth sacrificing the life on our old boots for. Very nice stuff. And we'll continue leveling up, just heading over towards this life. Okay, we've now reached the Warden's Quarter entry. So we're going to go through here, follow this blood trail along, and this will take us to uh, where we want to go. Seems a little bit uh, a little bit silly to uh, follow the blood trail to find out where you want to go. But uh, seems a little bit foreboding, and uh, yeah, there's a good reason for that. But we'll continue along. Go up through here. There's some lore and stuff like this you can check out in this area here. Just a bit of extra storyline for the game. And uh, we'll continue following this blood trail up here. Easiest way to navigate around. And here we go. Now, before we enter the Warden's Chambers, it's a good idea to go back to town. Now, we have plenty of Portal Scrolls, so we're in good shape. Again, if you don't, make sure you go back to town first at the previous waypoint. And we're going to go back to town. This achieves a few purposes. It allows us to clear out our inventory, firstly. Secondly, it allows us to refresh our flasks. Whenever you go back to town, you get your flasks refilled, so that's very helpful. And it's going to actually allow us to uh, purchase something we need pretty desperately, which is a second Coral Ring. Now we have a 29 life one here, we'll go ahead and get that. Now we actually have uh, a transmute here, so I'm going to actually go ahead and transmute this ring even. Gave us a little bit of life regen, nothing major. But uh, that's about it, let's go back through. And uh, we'll go fight the first major boss of Act 1, the Warden. Now this guy is pretty terrifying the first time you fight him, but he is possible to deal with. We want to drop a portal before we start fighting him. We can actually use that to go back to town to refresh our flasks. Now we're going to keep our distance as a ranged character, and what we're going to do is kind of scoot side to side. If we get too close, you'll notice he actually does this huge blood slam sort of attack like that. We actually That actually hit us, but since we have two coral rings and some other nice pieces of gear, we're not in too much danger. If you don't have much life, if you don't have those coral rings, you can actually get one shot like that, so you've got to be very careful. So what we're going to do is shoot at him, and then run side to side to try and avoid that attack. As you can see, he uses that hook to grapple you inwards, and uh, when, you get, when you get in close range with him, he will use that blood slam attack. So what we're actually going to do is draw him out into a bit more of an open area. And we kind of want to position him up the top of our screen. 
so that we can see him much easier. If we're down the bottom and he's up the top, we can see him much better. So we're going to try not to run around this wall, because then he'll chase us around. But we're going to try and just move side to side to avoid those attacks, especially that one. So just side to side attacking. As a melee character, you have a bit of a tougher time, but I'll kind of show what you have to do. You kind of want to get in close and still move around him. So you want to attack, move back, dodge this sort of thing, attack and move back. We managed to dodge that one as well. And you kind of just want to, you know, go into melee range and dodge out of the way. And uh, if you take a bit of damage, just simply run away and use one of your health flasks like I'm doing here. Now the reason we wanted to upgrade our health flask before, we did happen to have one medium life flask. Helps us a lot with healing. Now if you don't have any medium life flasks for this fight, when you go back to town, make that trip back to town, you want to make sure you buy some off Nessa. But we'll just keep dodging here. This fight's a little bit desinky, especially on Australian internet. <laughs> but uh, we're just slowly working down, nice and safe, dodging side to side, avoiding his attacks. And there he goes, there he goes, there he goes. <laughs> and we get a nice loot explosion as well. So we're going to go ahead and pick up anything we need from here, which could be strapped leather, uh, velvet gloves could be good, go her gloves, soldier helmet, uh, the crude, no, we probably don't want the crude bow. The short bow would be good, and the wrap mitts could, wrap mitts could be good as well. Now, from this actual point, once you kill the boss, you automatically get the waypoint for the next zone. So we're fine to either portal back to town or to uh, simply log out and use a free trip back to town like we did earlier. We'll go ahead and identify this gear before we uh, finish up this episode, though. So we didn't get anything good from here. Uh, we'll go ahead and put this bow on since it gives us an extra bit of uh, mana leech, which will help us support our skills a bit more. Nothing good on the gloves. Uh, the chest piece is... Not bad, I'll put this on. The strapped leather has much higher evasion than this. It's going to help us out a bit more. And uh, we've just got nothing nothing too interesting on these other pieces. So that's fine. And that signifies the end of episode 2. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We took down Brutus. Pretty exciting stuff. And we're about halfway through Act 1 now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.